In this lesson, we will have a look at the development of burgwins in South Africa. Burgwins typically occur during winter time. They are characterized in that they blow from the interior of South Africa down towards the coast under the influence of the pressure gradient force which requires a high pressure over the interior and a low pressure along the coast. In doing so, these winds need to move from the interior of South Africa across the escarpment and down towards the coast. It is this moving down the escarpment that causes the air to sink and thus the air warms up. Berg winds typically increase the temperatures along the coastal regions during winter time. However, once the berg wind conditions subside, it is followed by cold, rainy conditions. Berg winds typically increase the chances of fault fires along our coastal regions. The interior of South Africa is located on a high-lying plateau and this plateau is separated from the coastal regions by a range of mountains that run parallel to the coast. These mountains collectively are called the escarpment. So what exactly is required for the development of bird winds? The Kalahari high pressure needs to be present over the interior of the country and there needs to be a coastal low along the coastline of South Africa. As the wind moves under the influence of the pressure gradient force from high over the interior to the low pressure along the coast, it is forced to go across the mountains and down the escarpment. It is this moving down the escarpment that causes the air to warm up and by the time it reaches the coastline it is experienced as a hot dry wind. It is dry because it originates over the interior of the country where there is very little uh, water to evaporate and it is warm because it descends down the mountain towards the coastline. So just uh, in summary, Kalahari high pressure over the interior of the country Coastal low along the coastline, the wind moves from the interior down the escarpment towards the coastline. Its origin is over the interior, which makes it dry, and it is warm by the time it reaches the coast because it moves down the mountain. Just as an alternative, you're going to find that the Kalahari high pressure cell could also interact with the low pressure that is associated with a passing mid-latitude cyclone. Let's have a look at the Geography Paper 1 from the National Senior Certificate Examination of November 2023. Question 1.5 specifically deals with Bergwins in South Africa. Question 1.5.1 says to name the high pressure cell and the low pressure cell indicated on the sketch that leads to the development of Bergwins. So the question requires you to specifically name this high pressure cell and to specifically name the low pressure cell found on the map. The high pressure cell is the Kalahari high pressure and the low pressure cell is called a coastal low. Question 1.5.2 says which sketch A or B represents the formation of Bergwins, you are required to choose either sketch A or sketch B. In sketch A, we see that the wind moves from the coastline up the mountain towards the plateau and the interior of the country, whereas in sketch B, the wind starts on the plateau, goes down the mountain towards the coast. The correct option would be sketch B. 1.5.3 Give a reason for your answer to question 1.5.2. In other words, give a reason as to why you chose sketch B in the previous question. And the reason lies in the fact that Bergwins develop over the interior of South Africa. They blow across the escarpment down the mountain slopes towards the coastline. So in sketch B, the wind originates over the interior 
and blows down towards the coastline. Question 1.5.4 says to explain why cloudless conditions are indicated by the station model at X on the sketch map. Please be aware that this is one of those questions that will require both a factor and a qualifier. The factor being the reason for why, the factor being the fact, and the qualifier being the reason for why you have stated a particular fact. So in this instance, you're going to notice that the weather station at X is indicated as having uh, clear skies. In other words, there uh, is no cloud cover. The reason for that is because ahead of the low pressure cell, the winds blow offshore. And offshore winds are warm, dry winds. And because of it originates uh, over land and it blows offshore, it's going to create clear uh, conditions at weather station X. Okay, I've altered question 1.5.5 slightly from what it, the way it was stated on the question paper. However, it still reads in a paragraph of approximately eight lines, explain the negative impact that bird winds have on the natural environment and suggest strategies that can be put in place to limit this negative effect. It's important to remember that in writing this uh, eight-line paragraph, you need to include both the impact and strategies. So just some impacts. Berg wind dries out the natural vegetation. Berg winds increase the temperature of the area along the coast and makes it vulnerable to felt fires. These felt fires destroy the natural vegetation. Some strategies to counter the impact would be to create fire breaks uh, to ensure water accessibility, create awareness of the impact of felt fires, uh, have emergency services on hand, and to build, maintain, or monitor uh, lookout towers and warning systems in the event of felt fires developing. Additionally, the community could be educated on its impacts uh, as well as developing windbreaks to assist with uh, managing the impact of uh, these bird winds along the coastal regions.